Continuing with chapter 15, we're going to talk about conditional probability today, as well as the general multiplication rule. Starting with conditional probability, conditional probability is a probability that takes into account a given condition. So it's probability that's based off of something you already know. So finding the probability of something when you already have a specific piece of information. So finding out the probability that you randomly select a senior knowing they are taking AP Calc. So you know they take AP Calc, so you only select from AP Calc students. Conditional probability is written as the probability, so the P, and then in parentheses, you have your two different events with a vertical line. The vertical line means given. So this is the probability of event B given event A. So event A would be what we know. So in the example I just said, what we know is that they are an AP Calc. So I would say the probability of a senior given AP Calc. To find the probability of event B given event A, we restrict our attention to only the outcomes in A. So again, I would only use AP Calc students. The way we write that out, and this is going to be important to know, but you will be given this formula on the test as well as the AP test, but it would be the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of A and B. So they're in AP Calc and they're a senior out of the probability of A, so just the AP Calc students. To make conditional probability easier, we often use contingency tables. Using contingency tables to find probabilities makes conditional probability a lot easier to do. So the example that we're going to use today for a contingency table is that there were 478 children grades 4 through 6 and they were asked what their primary goal was, whether it was to get good grades, to be popular, or to be good at sports. So we have dealt with contingency tables before, but if you don't remember, this is a contingency table where you are given two variables, the gender as well as their goal, and then these are inside of the table are really your conditional um, distributions, and then your margins, your totals, again are your marginal distributions, that should sound slightly familiar, and we use different pieces of the table depending on what we are being asked. We're going to use the school children and determining what their goal is as an example. So to start, we want to know the probability that a randomly selected student is a girl. So this is the probability that a student is a girl. Since it's just a randomly selected student, we're looking at the total students, which is 478. And we want to know the probability that they are a girl. So there is a total of 251 girls. So we would write that as 251 over 478, which is 0 0.525, or 52.5%. Our second example is to find the probability that a randomly selected student is a girl whose goal is to be popular. So this is the probability that they are a girl and they want to be popular. Now we're still looking at the grand total, which is 478, but now we know that they have to be a girl and popular. So I go to the inside of the table and find girl and popular, well, there are 91 students that are both a girl and their goal is to be popular. So that would be 91 out of 478, which is 0 0.190 or approximately 19%. Our next question is what is the probability that a selected female student wants to be good at sports? Now in this case we're actually dealing with conditional probability because it has to be a randomly selected female student. So that would end up being the probability that the student wants to be good at sports given they are female. Because if we're only looking at the female students, then I'm only using this row right here because I'm only looking at the girls. So writing this out, this would be the probability that they are good at sports and are female but I'm only looking at the female, so it would be the probability of female. 
So in this case, sports and female is 30 out of the total number of females is 251, or that ends up being 0 0.12, or approximately 12%. Continuing with the same context, we want to know what is the probability that we have selected a girl given that the selected student's goal is popularity. So this is similar to the last problem, but now we want to know the probability that they are a girl given their goal is to be popular. So in this case, again, it would be the probability that they are both a girl and popular out of just the probability of being popular. So from the table, we can see that a girl and popular is 91, again, but the total number of popular students is just 141, which would give us a grand total of 0 0.645. So that means that if a student's goal is to be popular, there is a 64.5% chance that they are female. Using a different context, we're going to look at probability using cards. Again, I have said it before, but if you are not familiar with cards, try and get yourself familiar with them. There are 52 cards. There are two colors, red and black. There are four suits, hearts, diamonds, spades, and clubs. So there are 13 of each suit, 26 of each color. A face card is a jack, queen, or king. So there are 12 face cards. But looking at these examples, I draw one card from a standard deck and I look at it. I tell you it is red. What's the probability that it's a heart? So in this case, I'm looking at the probability that a card will be a heart given that you know it's red. So this would be the probability of a heart and red divided by the probability that it's red. Well, there are 13 hearts. All of those hearts are red. But there are 26 red cards, so that would be 26. So 13 out of 26 ends up being 1 half or 0 0.5. Then I want to know what is the probability it is a jack given that it is a face card. So here I'm looking at the probability that we have a jack given a face card. So this is the probability of jack and face card divided by the probability it's a face card. So there are four jacks in a deck, and there are 12 face cards, so four out of 12, or one third, which would be 0.33 or 33.3%. Now that we know about conditional probability, we can use the general multiplication rule. The multiplication rule says that the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B but A and B have to be independent, meaning that one outcome does not affect the other. If they are not independent, meaning that one outcome will affect the outcome of the other, then the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given A. So it's the probability of A times the conditional probability of B, and that's the general multiplication rule. Oftentimes, if you have to use the general multiplication rule, we're either using a contingency table or a diagram um, of some kind, and it makes it a lot easier, and we don't necessarily have to use the formal rule as written, but in some cases, we do. Uh, but that's all I have for tonight, so I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great night.